Sorry, guys. You're balancing on children's multivitamins. Oh, man. Not very well. Not a very balanced lifestyle. Okay, cool. Hello. I'm going to talk about how I'm studying for the MCAT. So if you are going to be taking that or just want to know <laughs> what's going on in my life, here I am. So I am doing a self-study opposed to an MCAT course. An MCAT course would be more structured. I'd have an instructor probably, and then it would be through a company. Those are generally very expensive. I think they're upwards of thousands of dollars <laughs> usually. And so I'm doing a self-study because it fits into my schedule more and I have figured out how I learn best. And so I think a self-study for me fits well because I work and I'm in school and I research, but I also can do stuff at my own pace and can stay motivated in that way. If you feel like you cannot stay motivated to study for the MCAT, maybe an MCAT course would be helpful for you. I also heard from another video, somebody talking about their MCAT study experience, that a self-study is helpful because you can focus on the things that you're not as strong in. So after I take my first practice exam on Tuesday, I will know which sections I'm not as great at. And so that will help me in my self-study. I can spend a little bit more time on that and then not as much on stuff that I've already mastered. In an MCAT course, they would tell you what sorts of things you needed to be doing and that could be in stuff that you're already good at. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm using the Kaplan Complete 7 Book Subject Review 2019-2020. This is what the box looks like. Use this as my thumbnail, YouTube. Um, it comes with seven complete books. Um, this is an example I've been, oh, sorry, that was loud. This is an example I've been working on MCAT stuff this morning. So, oh, there's a hair. Behavioral science been doing that so the way that I learn best is by taking notes and then reviewing them but also just writing stuff down I think stimulates my brain at least in a way that helps me remember it and then also during that process I can kind of apply it to my life so I am doing that so here are some examples of my notes um, I have a, a video on note-taking so my note-taking method is the same if you want to see what I'm how I'm doing if you would like to see how I'm taking my notes, it's the exact same as I have been doing before. So I do that. I've been doing the concept checks at the end of the chapters. That's not recommended in all practices, but it helps me consolidate the knowledge. I also have been using my bullet journal to help me organize my study hours and making sure that I'm being productive and getting enough done. So I'll give you some examples of that. Ding, 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 ding. My goal for break was to study 80 hours. And so I've got this huge array here where I get to fill in a box for every hour and then subsequently break that down into weeks. And so my goal for this week is 10 to 15 hours, which I am very close to 10 right now. And it is Friday, but I've been working and I still have a couple more hours left today so I'll probably make it um, another thing that I have done I have this whiteboard of goals this is who I am as a person so like my entire room looks like achievement plans so for this first one I'll just pull it off and show you this is my overall goal so it's my MCAT study planner um, my goal is to study 200 hours. It might end up being more than that. Um, I also have rewards on here. So after each practice exam and after I get to 100 study hours, which is halfway. Um, and then I have my long-term goals, which are the top 90%, get into one of my top three choices of med school, and then some very long-term big picture stuff, um, why I'm doing it, why I need to succeed at it, being a doctor, being helpful in that way. Um, and then I also have ooh, this one, which is just helping me stay on track with my chapters. Obviously, you can see I thought I was going to be very productive, but I wasn't, and that's okay. It's Christmas break, so we're figuring that out. I'm a little bit more productive, getting faster now, which is good. So something that I would recommend, and I've talked about it before, but I'm going to talk about it again. The, the MCAT is a really long test, so there there is a necessity for you to have some endurance and some stamina and also be able to work efficiently for long periods of time. So I use kind of sort of Cal Newport's deep work method. And then I also, I guess I kind of use um, my big in Kappa Lizzie sent me this thing called the Pom Pomodoro. 
I'll put the name below, I don't know how to say it, the Pomodoro method, which in the book or the excerpt that she sent me, it's 25 minutes of concentration and then you take a five minute break. I do a little bit longer than that because Cal Newport suggests that your attention residue and that's also in a hidden brain episode. There's two podcast episodes related to this. They will be below the Pomodoro method, name will be below a lot of links for this episode, but suggesting that it takes about 15 minutes to get into the zone. And so if your time period is only 25 minutes, it doesn't seem like it's super productive. Also, if the MCAT is about seven hours, it's probably important to be able to work for longer than 25 minutes without a break. So right now I'm doing 90 minutes at a time, which gets my hours in very quickly because if you're doing an hour and a half at a time, you get to nine hours, like Boom. If you are not currently working for long periods of time or you're distracted, how you do the deep work method is you shut your phone off, shut your notifications off, you are not bothered by outside things. A lot of people don't listen to music or have snacks or drinks. I like having coffee with me and I also will play like video game scores in the background because that's I study best that way. But I can also study quietly and I'll switch on and off so I don't get used to it. However, if you're not currently doing that, I would suggest starting with the prescribed Pomodoro, which is 25 minutes, five minutes off, 25 minutes, five minutes off with no distractions. So you're not checking your phone. You're not checking your Facebook really quickly because attention residue is what that phenomenon is called. And so that's when you check something and then you come back to a task. It will take you about 15 minutes to get back into the zone that you were in before. And so I would recommend doing that. And then as you get used to that, kind of increasing the time. So I'm doing that with an hour and a half. And then once school starts, I will be doing two hours that I will move to two and a half hours after about three weeks and then three hours until test day. So <laughs> I don't have class Tuesday or Thursday, so I will be spending pretty large chunks of time during that um, doing MCAT really intense endurance building stuff as well. So that will be fun. So yeah, I would suggest starting slow. If you aren't already doing that without distractions, it would be very helpful and makes you a little bit more productive. Also, I read today in the behavioral science book about the Yerkes Dodson rule, which I think most people know about, which is the productivity curve. I knew about it. I actually lecture about it in some of my like stress management presentations. However, I did did not realize that there are different optimal amounts of arousal for each like for different kinds of tasks and it said in the book that lower arousal states are better for cognitively difficult tasks so that would be studying for the MCAT and I have noticed and I knew this before but it like it's all clicking right now that when I like take a couple breaths before and I make sure that I write slowly, I can go for longer periods of time and everything just is a little bit less overwhelming. So interesting that that's the way that worked out. So I'll show you an example of that because when I first started, my notes looked like this because I was just going at normal speed. But then when I slowed down, not that this is an example of productivity, but I notice when I'm in the zone, my handwriting is a lot more precise and I am like much calmer and I feel like I can go for longer periods of time. So very interesting. So that is just an interaction of what I'm doing for the MCAT. I got to get back to studying, but if you have any questions about that, do that below as well as there will be a book called Deep Work by Cal Newport. There's a link in the bio. There's also two podcast episodes I listened to about deep work that I found very helpful in the bio. Also, there's one more thing that I should put down there. Oh, the Pomodoro method. That's probably not how you say it, but that will be down there as well. Stay tuned for more episodes. I take my first practice exam on Tuesday, so I will probably be updating you at least one more time before test day, which is April 13th, 2019. And then after that, I'll let you know how it goes. And then we'll move into application season, baby. So stay tuned if you're not subscribed and you wanna know about medicine or working out or productivity or my stitch fix is coming soon. I also have a really big purchase coming to me and I'm gonna talk about finances and credit scores and this really cool app I'm using. So a lot coming to you. At least I have those plans. So we'll see if I'll actually do them. But anyway, bye.